Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Duramco, for having myself and my, Janet, uh, my colleague Janice Gracie here. I want to talk to you about GSA um, because I feel like what we do is something that you should be um, that you should know about. Um, my name is Paul Miller. I'm the customer service director. I work in the Lower Manhattan office of GSA. Our region of GSA includes New York, New Jersey, and interestingly, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. <laughs> so so uh, we're focused on New Jersey today. We can talk about Puerto Rico and everything else later. But Janice and I are going to talk to you about opportunities. So it is my role as a customer service director to be a liaison to the small businesses and work with our federal customers, both DOD and civilian, and they utilize our GSA contracts to get the products and services that they need. So I'm the liaison between yourself and then all of the federal customers that I have in New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Okay, so what can GSA do for you exactly? We help you gain access to a large federal marketplace. I'm not going to make you a promise <laughs> that I'm going to give you business today. That doesn't happen, right? Um, you have to earn it. Dominic talked a little bit about that, but having a GSA contract allows a procurement officer, oftentimes, it saves them time because they are utilizing that GSA contract that we have already negotiated terms and conditions with you, and it saves them time, it makes them happy, and it allows them to focus on mission critical items, okay? Um, we try to help you maintain a competitive advantage. It is the government's job to pioneer a lot of products and services. Maybe we do them well, I guess that's an opinion, right? But we need small businesses to do that. So we are working with you and then going to our federal customers and talking to them about, hey, this is the cutting edge. This is what we're working on with industry. We support and train. Janice will talk to you about what her Office of Small Business does. There are a lot of free resources. Please don't pay $1 for anything that you could get for free. <laughs> so um, I, we talked about the companies, right, that uh, will market to you. Hey, I can get you on a GSA contract. Hey, I can get you a government contract. It will cost X, Y, and Z. It is free to uh, apply for a GSA contract. It is free to have that contract and modify it. You can absolutely do it. I was sitting in your shoes many years ago when I was applying for federal grants and contracts. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna take your time, right? And time is money. It is a business decision as to whether or not you wanna pay for that and you have to decide if it's worth it. But it is, it is free and the, and the other resources Dominic talked about are also free. And we share success stories. So we are indirectly marketing small businesses to federal customers because the, you know, back in the day you might be able to, to talk to a lot of the procurement officers in the, the DOD bases or the civilian agencies. Most often small businesses really don't have access right so we are trying to work with them communicate with them tell them what we have and the success that we've had so my goal and my role is to perform visits with these customers on a weekly basis to talk about their requirements if they're interested in using gsa as an acquisition strategy then i provide to them all the companies that we have already that we've already contracted with. Um, GSA is not a mandatory source, it, it ha but oftentimes, I would say nine times out of 10, it is considered within that acquisition. Um, I provide virtual training and I also assist these customers with market research. So if you are on our GSA schedule, I am providing them a list of the companies that can provide those capabilities what socioeconomic factors or certifications that they have. And, and we are working to support that customer because at the end of the day, we want them to save money and doing that for them will help them do that. My DOD agencies, is there like a red dot? Oh yeah, it's green. green. Look at that. These are the agencies that I focus on the most. So my presentation will cover the pretty much the biggest contracts that these customers are focused in on. So really, you know, a small business owner will look at this as these are opportunities. These are things I need to know about. Uh, I don't know how truly relevant it is, um, but DOD and all federal agencies, they have a mission 
to um, work together when it comes to contracting, not creating duplicate contracts. So uh, yet another reason why using GSA is important to them, because the Army doesn't want to create necessarily their own contract if one already exists. And that is, if anyone's interested in the PowerPoint, I can provide it. This is a link to talk about what's best in class, and some is spend under management. The critical areas for all local businesses in this area to know would be OASIS for professional services. That's a master contract that the DOD uses pretty heavily in this area. The GWACs, Government Wide Acquisition Contracts. Um, the BMO, Building Maintenance and Operations, and as well as the schedules, which Janice will cover. Okay, so OASIS. This was created a, a few years ago. It focuses in on professional services. It has seven distinct areas. It's a master level IDIQ contract that you would become a part of and or subcontract with an existing OASIS contractor. There are, at, at minimum, and this sometimes changes every quarter, 130 companies already awarded, spanning 223 contract awards, I, um, both small business and unrestricted. So you could subcontract to either of them. And oftentimes, again, the reason why customers are utilizing this contract vehicle is because we have already worked with you and established all the terms and conditions, and they're simply placing an order against it. It's very easy, a lot more flexible for them to use. It doesn't cut out any competition. They are just competing within this OASIS category. So basically, in order to play within this market, you have to be an OASIS contractor. And I can, if you want to see me afterward, or I can maybe just go through a couple of dates here, they do what's called on-ramping. Janice will talk about the GSA schedules. They're open and continuous. You can apply to them at any time. But these contracts only have on-ramping time periods. The next on-ramping period, will uh, it's actually happening now for 8A businesses and various pools. So they want to establish an exclusive 8A subpool, and they will post their uh, proposals on FBO. Um, as well as other on-ramping opportunities throughout the rest of the year. So if you are not familiar with FBO, please become familiar with it. If you really want government contracts, you need to know what federalbusinessopportunities.gov is. You can create notifications that are emailed to you within the category of business that you do, and they're emailing you literally solicitations probably every single day. <laughs> So that as a business owner, you can decide, hey, this is worth my time. I probably should have asked people in the beginning, is everybody registered with FBO? Yes. Yes? Awesome. Great. Um, and, and, and let me ask you, how many people are already familiar with GSA? Okay, not too many. That's good. Okay, hope I'm doing a good job. So... The reason, again, why I'm presenting OASIS first is because this is a pretty premier contract vehicle that a lot of DOD agencies in the region are using. There is a separate contract for each pool. They have um, uh, multiple NAICS codes, so become familiar with your NAICS code. Um, it stands for North American Identification Classification System, something like that. <laughs> so you want to know what that NAICS code is, because oftentimes if you get the opportunity to talk with contracting, they speak in those codes. It could be on your capability statement if it isn't already. There's a um, single small business size standard associated with it, and there's always unique qualifications for entry. So for entering into an OASIS contract is very different than entering into a schedules contract. Sorry, this is a little small, but these are what we call the core disciplines. So this is the, over the umbrella of professional services, these are all the disciplines. So we have program management, consulting, scientific, engineering, logistics, and financial. Pretty much covers every professional services category you can think of. This is probably, uh, updated maybe about three or four months ago because it's been changing, but these are the pools, the service, the NAICS code within them, and the size standard. So 
When you think of major contracts, we're going to think of Oasis. That's one. The second one is the Office of IT Services. I talked about it in the beginning under GWAC, Government Wide Acquisition Contracts. They focus on IT. So if you are an IT business or you subcontract with a major IT firm, knowing about the GWAC is incredibly important. There are several types of GWACs. There's the Alliant. The original generation was called Alliant. The new one is called Alliant 2. And then there's also Original Alliant and Alliant Small Business. There is the VETS GWAC, which is exclusive for veteran-owned businesses. Um, it is not available for on-ramping, but again, you can always subcontract to the current awardees. It is VETS 2. It was recently awarded. I have two major requirements that will probably come out in the next three months for veteran, exclusively for veteran owned out of Picatinny Arsenal. You will see that either within the GSA market, like on GSA eBuy or on FedBizOps. So for my talk today, please go onto the GSA site. There are, there are references at the end of our um, presentation that will send you to that link and you'll get to see all the awardees. A government-wide acquisition contract allows for task and delivery orders. It's established by one agency, GSA, for all government agencies to use. Um, it allows for various contract types. So um, if you're familiar with the schedules, typically someone would use a GSA schedule for a firm fixed price contract. A GWAC allows for cost type contracts. And in the DOD, that's pretty popular. So this is really the only vehicle other than Oasis that would accommodate that. It's definitely important to know that it exists. Know the contractors that have been awarded in your category. Then there's 8A STARS, um, exclusively for 8A businesses. So there is an 8A program. You want to talk to the PTAC and the uh, Small Business Office if you're interested in becoming part of the 8A program. This is exclusive direct orders to 8A businesses. Now, there is a tremendous amount of contractors on the 8A STARS GWAC. It has over has up to a $10 billion program ceiling. Um, it was a, the base period went through 2016, but the option period goes through 2021. So again, you could either become part of the 8A program if you're a new business, that might be something of interest to you, or you could subcontract with the 8A firms that are there. It gives direct socioeconomic credit to a federal agency, which is incredibly important because you probably know all federal agencies have credit that they, or a percentage that they, uh, that they want to meet by the end of every fiscal year for certain types of businesses. Dominic mentioned, certainly don't lead with that. I think they publish the percentage on the website, but it, it makes no difference whether you know it or not. It's just if they are willing to have an 8A strategy and you're part of the 8A program, then you know that it's only competed within the 8A program and the award would exclusively go to you. Same thing with the veteran owner, the VETS2 program. These are the functional areas. In Oasis, we call them pools and disciplines. In 8A STARS, we call them functional areas. Computer facilities, computer system design. Just think, when you think of GWAC, think of IT services. The different uh, functional areas are called constellations, and these are all the NAICS codes within them. So Alliant and Alliant Small Business, um, it, what, what it allows you when you're doing an IT procurement is a manageable number of proposals. So some feedback you'll hear from contracting officers would be, oh, I don't really want to use the GSA schedules program because there are a lot of um, companies that respond and it takes me a lot of time to evaluate. But when using a GWAC, that's very different. They are promoting that it's only a small amount of companies that would be responding, which makes a lot of uh, procurement officials very happy. This is just a little bit of data on how this vehicle has been used. Uh, you know, again, it, it gets updated every quarter, but this is a tremendous amount of work that's flowing through the GWAC program a good portion of it is definitely coming out of this regional area. Last year alone, we had a $150 million task order out of Fort Belvoir. But that's just because it was awarded out of Fort Belvoir, the work is actually being done in New Jersey. 
you know. So Dominic had mentioned, know who your customers are in the area. Know the installations, you know. Um, you can find out on, I think, FPDS, that website, what they're buying. You know, I mean, just when you set up an FBO alert, you're getting emails about the solicitations and you're seeing, hey, McGuire, they buy janitorial services. The Fort Dix Army, they always buy IT, you know, software, hardware. You have to really know what they're buying in the area. And then that's where GSA maybe could help you. This is how the Alliant has been used over time. And as you can see, it's billions of dollars. DOD, and then it breaks down Navy, Army, Air Force, and civilian. I mentioned VETS 2, exclusively for veteran-owned. This is just a little snippet about the, uh, the program ceiling and the award dates. I want to check my time. OK, good, because Janice is next. I don't want to take away from Janice. <laughs> How am I doing? OK? I know it's lunch. And maybe you ate, or maybe you didn't, and you're like, Paula, can you just get this over with? But I'll continue. Uh, so OASIS, just as a recap, GWAC is IT, and then there's BMO, Building Maintenance and Operation. So it was the first of its kind in the, in the sense that it was awarded by zones. So zone, um, it was a zonal approach. So we did the first zone first. I think I might have the map here. This zone with all those states. Every company that was awarded um, has to provide services in every state, and you can subcontract to them if you're not part of the BMO. Um, but it's, it, I mean, because it is offered within our region, it's good for you to know because GSA uses the BMO solution too. You know, GSA, even though we contract four other federal agencies, we have contracts too. We have federal buildings. That is our other job, to maintain all the federal buildings. So we have janitorial maintenance contracts for all of those buildings. You'll see a lot of those procurements on FedBizOps. This is the structure and the scope, HVAC, plumbing, elevator maintenance, etc. So why don't I go through this, and then I'm going to hand it over, I think, to Janice to talk about the schedules program. All right. Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.